You may have seen the record high temperatures that have occurred in Europe over the course of this week and also the high temperatures we've seen in the southern plains here in the United States. And so a lot of people have asked me, how does climate change, how has climate change impact those extreme temperatures that we've seen? And I want to bring in a special guest with us. This is Dan De DePodwin. He's the director of forecast operations at AccuWeather. Dan, thank you for joining us. And I'm going to get right to the question that I think everybody wants to know is, is this extreme heat because of climate change? And if so, how much because of climate change? Yeah, Larry, it's a great question and great to be with you. And, and certainly, as we see this extreme heat in Europe, as well as what happened in the Pacific Northwest in the United States last summer, that's always a question of how much climate change has contributed to it. And there is some clear climate signal. It doesn't seem like we would get this significant of a heat event without some climate change um, attribution um, to it. And we really look at that from the fact that there are so many records that have been shattered across the United Kingdom and much of Europe, not just daily or monthly records, but all time records. It was the first time, for example, that there was over a 40 degree Celsius or 104 degree Fahrenheit temperature observed in the United Kingdom. There were also all time records shattered across France, Germany, uh, Portugal, Denmark, and other countries in Europe, too. So it's really the prolific, uh, prolonged nature of the heat as well as how many records have been broken. And there's also a lot of research that has been uh, completed on how climate change can impact the jet stream. And in the case of uh, the European heat wave, we just experienced really that a kink in the jet stream. And that's where planes fly a, a stream of air about at the altitude where planes fly. And that kink in the jet stream allowed a lot of hot air to bulge much further northward than we would otherwise expect. And that also happened in the Pacific Northwest last summer. And some of these more extreme um, kinks in the jet stream um, may occur more frequently as we continue to see the impacts of climate change. Yeah, it's so interesting because when you talk about those kinks in the jet stream, you're basically transporting hotter air down towards the equator northward. And, and the Earth, I always say the Earth is trying to find balance. It wants to balance out the heat that we see in the equator to the colder air to the north. And that flow of air is what generates the weather for us. So what you're saying is that because of climate change and because of the changing temperatures that we're seeing across the globe, we're seeing that jet stream more enhanced to transport that warmer air from the south farther to the north. And it really creates these extreme temperatures. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, Larry. And we've really seen uh, this not just again in, in the in in the in, in the United Kingdom, but also across the uh, Pacific Northwest last year. And we've um, will continue to see potentially more of these events. If you look at um, Europe, there's a lot of concern that these types of events, where 40 degrees Celsius or more, will occur uh, at least every few years. Where in the past that has really not been uh, something that has occurred, and that's a significant concern in terms of the health and uh, well-being of people who live in, in different cities in Europe uh, and as well as other parts of the world, but especially those pe people who do not have air conditioning in different vulnerable populations. Yeah, and I think one of the striking things that hits me as a meteorologist is, uh, and I, he I heard a great analogy from uh, Dr. John Knox, who's a meteorology professor at the University of Georgia. Uh, he said something along the lines of, if you're running a sprinting race, say you're running the 100 meter, you don't break a record by seconds, you break it by fractions of a second. And usually these extreme heat records in the past have only been broken by fraction, fractions of a degree, but like the record in England and Scotland fell by several degrees. So we're not just barely breaking records, it's the extreme nature that the records are being broken that's, that's kind of alarming, wouldn't you say? I would agree with that, Larry. It's also, uh, there's been a lot of different records. Again, we, were look, we, we look at records that, you know, there's a record for each day of the year, and it's fairly common to break a record on a given day. But when you start breaking records that are the record for the entire month, which was the case in places like Denmark, where it was the hottest July day on record, uh, also all-time records then in France, or all-time July records, the hottest July day ever in France. When you start doing that, or the, or the hottest it's ever been in a country, and when you break it by not just a couple of degrees or not just a, a, a degree Celsius by, or by even more than that, that's when it becomes really uh, very significant and unprecedented. Yeah, what do you say to somebody who says, well, it's summer, it's gonna get hot, and occasionally we get these extreme temperatures in summer. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard as I think as, as, as humans living in our, our community to, to kind of comprehend the extremes that are happening in different parts of the world because we're not experiencing them ourselves, at least here in Chicago. Um, what do you say to somebody who kind of questions the fact that 
Well, yeah, it's going to be hot. It's summertime. We expect temperatures to be you no know, warm. How do you what do you say to a person who, who says that? Yeah, we, we certainly do expect heat in the summer. We expect cold weather in the winter. You know, we expect different things at different times of year. It's not necessarily expecting the fact it will be hot. It's sort of the magnitude of that heat and the uh, how frequently that same type of heat uh, returns, uh, the return interval of that heat. Does it happen, you know, does a 100 degree day happen once a year in Chicago? Does it happen several times a year? And we, we are seeing these types of um, the return interval where these extreme conditions, heat, for example, return more frequently and or uh, and or is a higher magnitude. And that I think is where the, uh, the difference is between saying it's just a hot summer or a hot summer day versus saying that this is something that is uh, different than what we would expect typically. And so let's just talk about Chicago here locally because the one thing that we've seen here in Chicago with our weather changing over the past decades and even in fact uh, over a century, if you go back to 1900, from 1900 to now, our temperature here in Chicago has increased about 1.6 degrees. It's not a lot, but it is an increase. And we've also seen about uh, about 17 to actually 14 to 17 percent more precipitation per year as we've looked from 1900 to now. And what's interesting about that, Dan, is that those that increase in temperature has primarily occurred in the overnight lows. So the overnights have gotten warmer, but we haven't really seen a dramatic spike in daytime highs, at least here in Chicago. Uh, what, what do you say to that data that we have in relationship to how our climate has changed in Chicago? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of the overnight low increase may be, may be attributable to the increased urbanization as you have less mm -hmm. green areas, as you have more um, either paved areas or buildings and infrastructure, you can see a significant increase in the overnight lows where it doesn't cool off as much at night. But as you look at some of the projections going forward with what may happen over the next uh, 20 to 50 or 100 years, uh, in, in based on the different uh, computer models that are run by different climate entities, uh, if you take a look at the uh, Chicago's Climate Action Plan, they've run a, a variety of different models and they show that by the end of the century, the uh, annual temperature in Chicago may be uh, increased by between four and 12 degrees Fahrenheit. And that, that's a fairly large range, but that's be to, due to different types of models that they run, but that's a significant increase. And I think we'll see that not just overnight lows, but also daytime high temperatures um, that will see all of that increase. And if you look too, since the 1970s, the average temperature in Chicago has increased in that about 50 year time span. As a meteorologist uh, and somebody that studies the climate, is there something that stands out to you and you, you that grabs your attention and you say, oh, that's bad? Yeah, I think these types of heat events um, certainly stand out to me. Um, I have, I, I mean, I think all of us as humans all, only know what we know based on our experiences. So it's a pretty small window in terms of what's happened over the course of, of human history or of the Earth's history, obviously. But we can really say that um, the events that have been happening from a heat perspective are things that have not been recorded before. And it's not like, it, and it's not just that it's not, it, it's not even close to what happened in the Pacific Northwest last summer. I mean, there were some records that were set by seven, eight degrees Fahrenheit. We've seen some of the same things in, in Europe. And I would also say it's not just heat waves, it's things like severe weather where um, it's a little bit more unclear how climate change may impact severe weather like thunderstorms and tornadoes. But what we have seen is uh, an increase in severe thunderstorms out of the typical season. I think a prime example is the December tornado outbreak in the Tennessee Valley last year, where that was uh, a tornado outbreak that had, we had never seen in December before, much more typical of April uh, or the springtime. So I think it's these different types of events, maybe not things that have not occurred before, but that are occurring at different times of year that also are concerning. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Well, Dan, I thank you so much. Dan DePodwin is the Director of Forecast Operations at AccuWeather. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and uh, thank you so much for your insight. Great to be with you, Larry. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.